Yeah, hello Rajkumar. Do I'm audible? Yeah, Professor Rajkumar, do I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you are audible, sir. Okay, I'm just about. Uh, can I start? Hello. Sir, uh, yes. Sir, you are ready. Yes, you are ready. Okay. I'm not. Your voice is not audible. Can you say it again? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Just give me a minute. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I am just just for the question. I am just asking ask Dr. Uh, Professor Sarvana Kumar. Sir, uh, sir uh, just sir, give us a moment today. We can give sir, some introduction, introductory note. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome back to online at LFPP. Dear participant, now I am pleased to introduce honorable speaker for the session, who is a well-known personality in the field of additive manufacturing and facial industry. We are talking about a person who is having a unique way of working and research. Please welcome Dr. Deepak Pangal. Dr. Deepak Pangal is working in the Department of Facial Technology at National Institute of Facial Technology, NIFT, New Delhi. He has earned his PhD in the area of bending dye design using AI applications in 2015 from Sardar Vallabhoy National Institute of Technology, Surat. He has done master engineering is in the area of CAD CAM from DCR UST, Murutar, Haryana. He, along with his research team, is developing the low cost intelligent solutions for apparel manufacturing industry using industry four tools via additive manufacturing, mechatronics, IoT, and all applications. He has co authored more than 24 research paper and filled four number of Indian patents. He is having approximate 10 million INR of research grant in the area of additive manufacturing and IoT enabled skill evaluation system. He has surprised more than 25 number of master degree students and presently supervising one doctor, doctoral degree student. He has delivered more than 10 export lectures at various academic institutions of repute and industries. He is also doing consultancy for various renowned apparel manufacturing industries like MS Raymond, MS Shashi Export Private Limited, MS Trident, etc. in the field of additive manufacturing. So without any further delay, I request Dr. Deepak Pangal to take over the session. Please, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Uh, I just would like to play one video first. Let's just to check my audio and video is just going across. Just, just for the testing purpose. My video is playing. It all began in 1981 with a man named Hideo Dunn. Are you able to see my video as well as the audio also? Yes, sir. For the video. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So very good afternoon to everybody. So I think I've been called uh, uh, almost in half an hour before for the my lecture delivery and the, some of the technical glitch happened at the uh, 
uh, NIT Warangal part. So professor was not able to uh, continue with his presentation. So uh, that's a technical glitch that can be happen any point of the time. So without wasting, uh, and I've also been informed from the organizer that uh, after my lecture, they will continue with the uh, professor's lecture at from the NIT Warangal. Uh, uh, I also came across like in a three, four times we met the uh, professor at the NIT Warangal. I know his research area, he's working very, uh, he's setting very high benchmark in the area of the medical implants and the similar area. And now he just started with the metal printing. And uh, I wish him good luck for his research uh, work in his domain. Now, without wasting the time, I just start uh, to talk about the manufacturing of sewing machine parts using additive manufacturing technology. Uh, me, along my research team at NIFT New Delhi uh, for the last six, seven, eight, seven years almost, were working in the area of the 3D printing. And uh, I started my working in the domain of the 3D printing uh, by attending one of my EP at NIT Warangal only. Before that, we just doing the small edits and bits in the area of the 3D printing. And there, uh, this lecture was uh, organized by uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Ravi only at NIT Warangal. Uh, and Professor Ian Gibson was the resource person at that time. And uh, that was the starting of the journey. Then we thought, why don't we have an uh, application of this uh, technology in the area of the sewing manufacturing industry? and we are not like doing the very great research in this domain to be very honest we're trying to identify the low cost um, solution for the apparel manufacturing industry and today i'm going to talk about the uh, what all case studies no, some of the case studies like a six five to six case study i'm going to discuss which you have done in the apparel manufacturing and the similar allied industry and how they have been developed, what was the inputs, what are the journey about the each case study and the later what was the output and how the industry has been ap uh, appreciating those uh, that I can say honestly, like an industry is appreciating specifically. And because of this, we are getting the three, four consultancy project in the apparel manufacturing industry only. And the very renowned companies uh, would like to set up their additive manufacturing uh, in their plant itself and we are doing the capacity building for them and developing the some of the parts. Now the way I've just structured my today's lecture is uh, first we'll talk about the basics of the 3D printing, a small history and all. I try to take like a half an hour to talk about all these things. I just rushed through the couple of the things. Uh, I, I, I along my research team capable to develop uh, a bit expertise in the domain of the 3D printing specifically to FDM technology, fuse deposition modeling. And uh, I, but I talk about the other technologies also, which has been standard uh, standardly defined by the F42 committee of ASTM, which is responsible for defining all the uh, standards in the area of the 3D printing, specifically additive manufacturing. So I just start with that. Now, uh, additive manufacturing is uh, one of the technological enablers of the industry 4.0. And now everybody just talks about the industry 4.0, and uh, there are the various. Uh, systems which comes under the industry 4.0 and uh, as one of the technology enabler for that is the additive manufacturing itself others are like an in internet do things augmented reality uh, augmented uh, reality or what you say the big data ai cloud computing these are the other but one of them is the additive manufacturing technology and that's why it's very popular and it's not started yet it's a history of the uh, couple of the decades back it has been started and the people might get confused the various terminology which is associated with the 3d printing or they some they also came across the rapid prototyping um, and they also came across the additive manufacturing all these three terms if in today's scenario say the more or less the same thing it's only the time horizon when the technology was developed initials 80s 1980s and 1970s in between that time the technology was not but not that much sound and we're not able to get the good industrial usable parts. So the technology initially only was used to develop the prototyping parts only. So while the prototype parts have been developed, they will check for the various assembly systems and the, for the quality issues and other things. And uh, they also been used to see how aesthetically uh, parts look like, how the functionality uh, would look like, how the assembly tolerance have been coming as per requirement or not. But later when the technology at the end of the 20th century, when the technology become uh, advanced, uh, but still that time the technology was not the economical or not the 
in the hands of the layman or layman i'm mean saying the small industries here not the layman sorry so but the functional parts can be developed using the technology because of the technology advancement so at that time it has been uh, called as an uh, additive manufacturing later due to further advancement technology become more economical and the functional parts can be developed at the desktop level also we have an a desktop type printers so there the technology has been brought a new word as in 3d printing so that's only the difference but more or less the terms are same and the 3d printing is if you say the as the sf42 uh, committee what they define the 3d printing refers to a process by which digital 3d design that is used to build up a component in layer by layer deposition that's one of the criteria uh, still uh, holds its ground that the, in the 3d printing we make the layer by layer deposition of the material and it's a very popular saying what we see is what we can build wysiw yb process so whatever we can see in our day to day life any things like now i'm bowl in front of me it can be uh, transformed into a digital form and the uh, using the any of the 3d printing technology we can build it and there the couple of examples have been seen on my screen and if you rush through the timeline uh, these are the initial introduction I just rush through this very fast and later uh, we'll discuss in detail about the case studies and uh, this is the uh, video sponsored by or developed by the autodesk only and if you see i just played for you this talks about the timeline began in 1981 of the with a man named Leo Kodama printing. Kodama's vision for a functional rapid prototyping system kickstarted a revolution the voice over is already very clearly model, given so i am not really stopping right. and charles holt's invention of stereolithography which let designers create 3d models using digital data the secret an acrylic based material known as photopolymer that turned to plastic under a laser beam and allowed inventors to prototype their designs without the costs 1992 Hall debuted his stereolithographic apparatus while it was still only achievable on an industrial scale its potential was undeniable in 1999 the first 3d printed organ was implanted in humans and incredible medical advancements followed in 2005 The RepRap project launched a 3D printer known as Darwin, which could build itself and print its own parts. Suddenly, people everywhere had the power to create anything, and mass customization flourished. Startups began to thrive. Object built a machine that could print in multiple materials at once. Today, 3D printers are cheaper than ever, and their accuracy has improved. The ability to 3D print nearly anything is becoming a reality. It begs the question: What will the future bring? 2017 brought the first 3D printed ship propeller. Objects can be created the width of a human hair, and NASA's zero gravity 3D printer creates everything from food to rocket parts. So only time will tell. But one thing's for certain: 3D printing is just getting started. So recently, we can see the application of the 3D printing in the space also, and the NASA is working in this domain, and it's very difficult to carry the lot of inventory in the space shuttles. So what they are doing, uh, they are using the 3D printing technology. They have a digital data for the various spare parts which have been needed in the space, and they are they are using 3D printing technology to build the parts which might be. Use there only, so not carrying the much of the inventory. The, the same thing uh, can be done at the submarines also. And the, as per the additive manufacturing technology, uh, this F42 committee of ASTM, so they have an a seven standard uh, classification or, or different type of the 3D printing av available. So wet photopolymerization is the first one. Then the material jetting. binder jetting material extrusion which is very popular and a very economical one and we have an a desktop type print uh, printer in this domain it's uh, commercially called as an fdm technology also then the power bed fusion material in the form of the uh, powder the sheet lamination and the direct energy deposition so we'll talk about all this one by one very fast like now was the first wet photopolymerization is also called the stereolithographic so it's a specific type of the material which when be exposed to to any type of the light or the different type of the lights it's get solidified so that technology has been used here here we can see the material in is in this resin form here and uh, this is a build plate on which the material uh, this is a component has been manufactured and this is a laser light which is passed through the lens and we have an a what is it xy sc uh, scanning mirror which just facilitate 
to expose the specific material in a specific coordinate uh, where the light will come and the material gets solidified and it does the layer by layer. When one layer has been done, so it was uh, bed has been lowered by the one, uh, what do you say, the layer height. And uh, just we can see a video on this very fast one. Once the liquid thermoset resin is loaded in the vat and the digital instructions are programmed, the laser unit directs an ultraviolet beam to a reflective mirror. From there, a Galvo motor system steers the focused beam to the resin surface. First, the laser draws layers of the support structures, followed by actual part geometry. After a layer is imaged on the resin surface, an elevator system shifts the build platform down and a recoder blade moves across the platform to apply the next layer of resin. The process is repeated layer by layer until the build is complete. So next we have on a material jetting process. It's just like an inkjet printer uh, where we have on a, these two build material and the support material, two types of different material. Uh, the way we'll give the uh, digital STL file, uh, which is sliced later to know the what is the various layer, how the contour will happen and how the tool geometry uh, tool path will happen based on that. The material comes out of this uh, container or reservoir, what you say the and it comes on a specific orientation based on those instructions G code and M code, which is essential for any uh, CNC machine. So 3D printing is also one type of the CNC machine. And we also have the UV ultraviolet curing lamp. So when the material falls here in the forms of the droplet, this UV curing material just cure, cure it. And we have an elevator here, and this is the built, built plate. This work in the similar matter here. We have a flexibility to use the different materials at the same time, and the different colors can be used. And uh, due to droplet and very fine droplets, we can have a good accuracy and uh, what is it, the um, detailing can be done at the higher end. We can use the, some of the flexible type of the like things here. Yes. Have but a instead look of on jetting the drops of ink, PolyJet 3D printers jet tiny droplets of liquid plastic. A UV light instantly cures the plastic, solidifying it. And so, layer by layer, complex models take shape. The most advanced polyjet systems can build multi-material parts, soft, rigid, clear, and colorful. You can even adjust material properties like heat resistance and durability. The same technology that makes gorgeous prototypes also makes precise manufacturing tools. Designers can predict future needs and serve them now. Manufacturers deliver better products faster and with less waste. Researchers have new methods of saving lives. Polyjet is reshaping industries like film, fashion, and medicine. It's helping people with great ideas improve the future. Then we have a third, the binder jet. It's the uh, same type of the multi-channel inkjet printer had we have with us. And we have the powder spreading rule on the left hand side where the uh, material uh, is used to build the part. It's been there. And the one ruler is there that spread the one of the layer here. And uh, this multi-channel inkjet printed, uh, inkjet printed had just dispersed the specific type of adhesive using that the this powder material can be uh, bind together. That's why it's called the binding material. So the property of adhesive are very material, uh, very important here. And the type of the material uh, as a powder we are using as to build the part is also important in the, both the adhesivity should be very high and a very precise nozzle is used to uh, draw here. Yeah, what is the spread the this adhesive on the uh, powders uh, which deposit layer by layer. When once the layer has been completed, the, again the ruler will come and it will put the another layer here and this uh, uh, object of this and you can see very fast the video here the same so you have a better understanding what we are talking about related to the binder jet so adhesive property is important here and the powder uh, in between powder material and the adhesive we are using that and the other uh, things are similar to any other type of the 3D printing technology, like layer by layer deposition and CNC. Jetting additive manufacturing is a process inspired by the technology of inkjet printers. In this process, a liquid binder is selectively deposited on a powder bed with a print head. 
It is a growing process that allows the production of parts for the manufacturing, medical, and dental industries. This technique enables the production of metallic and ceramic parts, as well as sand molds for castings. To start the process, a 3D drawing is imported into the printer software. The powder to be used is placed in a dispenser, which ensures a constant supply during printing. First, a powder layer of a specific thickness is spread. Thereafter, the printing head, moving on two axes, projects the binder where is necessary. Before moving on to the next layer, the solvent contained in the binder is evaporated by an incandescent lamp. The powder bed is then lowered and a new powder layer is deposited. Therefore, the production takes place in a series of steps that build the part layer by layer. When the cycle is completed, the binder is cured by placing the container in a furnace. The temperature and time depend on the type of binder employed during printing. After this step, unbound particles are removed to reveal the part or the mold. After this step, the sand molds are ready to be used in foundries. The metal and ceramic parts must undergo sintering, infiltration, heat treatment, or hot isostatic pressing before being used. So in binder jetting, the post processing used very frequently. And uh, when we have a green part, green part is the one part which is we get it from the uh, 3D printer only. There it is either go for the like a heat treatment, either for the compressive strength build uh, come under the compressive strength to have an, a good part with us. So the saw called the post processing. Uh, sintering is also in a, one of the type of the actually heat treatment process. So that's all like an uh, fourth one is the material extrusion. This is also called as an FDM technology. Uh, in this technology, we have an, a nozzle with us. We have an, a material in the form of the filament. Filament have of the different uh, filaments with wire wire filaments, so they have a different diameter and they have been extruded through the extrusion process. They have been forced to move through this nozzle where the thermocouples are there, which heat the material and this nozzle is been used to move in a, on a 2D plane uh, using the G code or M code based on the instruction we'll get as per the part geometry and uh, we have an, a few uh, what's a build plate also. So it is very popular one. It is very economical one and uh, this comes under the desktop technology. Now it is the metal printing also coming as a desktop technology by one of the one or two of the company, but they also have they only have a green part with them. But later we need the either washing or the sintering process and the both to have a good part. But now the technology is very uh, comprising in a small space. Earlier it used to be a very big area required specifically the metals. And the type of the material we can use uh, are the different for the extrusion. The list is long. We can use the PLA, we can use the nylon, we can use the uh, what you say the onyxing material. Deposition modeling is a 3D printing method. A list is very long for the material. Makes durable objects out of the same plastics you see in everyday products. With FDM, the 3D printer takes a spool of plastic filament, melts it, and extrudes it onto a tray to build apart layer by layer from the bottom up. FDM materials are all industrial grade thermoplastics. That's what makes the resulting parts so tough. And it's also why <laughs> FDM is Sorry. changing the way industries design and manufacture. Excuse me. With FDM, a designer can sketch an idea and test it the same day. Industries can cut lead times and costs. Products turn out better and get to market faster. FDM parts are helping to build the cars you drive. They're in the airplanes you fly in. They're in the medical devices that save lives. FDM is cutting waste in manufacturing. It's helping engineers power remote villages in Africa. It's helping farmers feed an ever-expanding population. And the ideas keep coming. Uh, I would like to tell about very initial story. My car, uh, like what you say, when a uh, car keys having a one of the caring with me and the one of the face has broken down. So, so like six year back, I have only just getting made in a CAD model of that and using this uh, FDM printer, I made the cover of that and working very fine till date. So a powder bed fusion, uh, direct material, <laughs> direct uh, melting laser sintering and uh, powder bed fusion is actually the technology which is in the powder has been used in a material and the 
energy a type of energy used for the different sources either from the electro beam either from the laser so based on that the type of the technology has been named uh, so we have an a uh, selective laser sintering selective laser melting and we have the electro beam melting so these uh, it, th on the type of the power we are using to uh, join the material uh, based on that the powder bed fusion has been named so but broader it has been called as the powder bed fusion and the same thing the powder is on the one reservoir on the left hand side you can see and the layer by layer deposit here and the type of energy comes either that's a laser either that's the electro beam and in the specific layer we just bind the material using the energy whether there's a before melting or after melting so i'll just show you in a video from the slm very fast which is for the metal used very popularly this is the expensive technology these printers are very expensive and the material handling is also very difficult here and the big chambers are there you have to either the n99 mask i think you have to wear when you have to deal with the technology and if you see the technology but it is very precise one you can get the good accuracy and the metal parts can be good so it shows the layer by layer of the deposition of the material here we can see uh, like you know, this is the powder and the laser are coming here and slm specifically they are typing here so layer by layer deposition happen new layer is been applied one powder form has been applied on the previous layer and again the laser comes and this layer by layer work <coughs> the technology also required the post processing like you know, either the heat treatment or the washing first and the heat treatment powder required but this type of the technology doesn't require any like a spool structure because it's always be full of the powder outside which so we don't re you require the support structure which is generally there into the fdm technology and first of technology so this is slm very complex parts can also be built using this i just show you the couple of the things these are the wheels or the rotors or a turbine uh, so they can be built of the these are the metal and these type of complex shapes can be built uh, uh, what is it the space craft or the what is it the airplanes engines parts can be built up using this technology heat exchangers uh, <laughs> plates can be built using this technology so that's the technology and this another is a sheet metal lamination it is also called two technology are there uh, ultrasonic and technology are there so in what happen in it the this is the two type of the things one is the sheet paper print is there and the when the lamination comes and the uh, adhesive comes here so i'll show you in the uam here ultrasonic out of these three so different materials um, metal already been cut into the various layers and they and they have been joined the using the ultrasonic manufacturing energy additive manufacturing process and how it works you can have a look in this video well here in solid state on each other using ultrasounds to start the fabrication the shape is programmed into the cnc machine so cnc machine first the cut the material strips with a certain overlap ensuring a fully dense part the vibrations induced by ultrasound permit mechanical anchoring of the lamellae on the substrate thereafter the lamellae are stacked layer by layer the type of materials can even be changed during manufacturing to impart special properties to the finished part the process can also weld incompatible materials because no liquid phase is formed during welding. After the welding, machining is performed to obtain the final part. And the last is the direct energy deposition technology in which what happened this is basically used for the uh, maintenance purpose and where we have to do the maintenance part it is we have an electron beam with us we have a material coming in the form of the wire and electron beam uh, falls on it and material get deposit and um, and it's a layer by layer deposition that's why it comes under the uh, uh, 3d printing technology or additive manufacturing technology and this uh, basically as i mentioned that the for the repairing purpose or for extrusion purpose extrude 
like you know, we have another surface already given and we have to extrude the surface for this. This is been used and the position of uh, material at the complex shape is difficult. So many of the times we use the five axis machines for this. I just show in video so you have an idea what type of the uh, 3D printing <laughs> technology it is. So you can see the material is coming in the form of wires and the laser is coming from the center and it's got melted here. Now you can see the same thing is and that's the animation view. Uh, now the surfaces need to be extruded. So this has been the process here. Like this, some part you need to repair where it can also be used. when the shape are complex and you have to do the repairing at the other pass here you can see the five axis up to five axis machine you can use the five axis machine are using to one of the repair purpose using the 3d printing technology DED. To be very honest, I'm not the domain expert of all these. Uh, I'm not seen almost. Uh, I've seen the three types of the technology in my life. To be very honest, I'm not seen the all. Uh, but just to, for the sake of information, I'm just talking about all these things. Uh, FPM I can talk in detail. So to, just to make you sensitize about what are the different types of the. Uh, printing technology available how they have been classified so that's the sole purpose of showing all these videos and uh, talking about the type of work, basic working and the principle behind that so here you can use for the introducing the new surface or the existing surface so this extruded surface and the repair so that's the sole purpose of this type of work, technology now this is a very summarized table here i'm just going to present which talks about the what type of the technique uh, about the seven type of the state of the material what type of the material we can use the type polymer material what the advantage and what's the disadvantage like in wet photopolymerization we use a plastic and polymers uh, empty material jetting we can use a polymer and plastic as binder jetting metals polymers ceramics all can be used here material extrusion polymer uh, but today is uh, we can say the metals can also be used and the two of the companies are working in that they have come up with the commercial printers and extrusion technology and the powder bed fuse and the powder metal and the polymers. So this paper plastic and the sheet metal and direct energy filament is being used through the laser light and the, what are the advantages or disadvantages like you can see the material extrusion <laughs> is the having a disadvantage of the less accuracy and reduce the final quality of the product and the type of the material we use. Either we use the ABS with the user PLA or nowadays the which is a, a nylon with the chopped carbon fiber as an onyxy material. We can have a continuous fiber filament parts uh, for um, what do you say the glass fiber, carbon fiber and Kevlar. They can be the part of the uh, filament and the uh, powder bed fusion is a relatively inexpensive a large range products can be used. Size limitation is there. Size limitation is there actually with all the parts. Um, so that's uh, and direct energy. What has mentioned there is a uh, use for the repairing low cost and the high strength is there. And isotropic and the nozzle. These are the disadvantages. Nozzle clogging is also with the problem with the material extrusion because we cannot generally go 0.4 mm, uh, less than the 0.4 mm. Uh, nozzle die out like because then the clogging happen because the proper um, flow cannot be possible and the choking of the nozzle is a problem in that area. Now the application part so it's of the various application in various fields and people talking about this slide is very um, old one. I'm not able to get the latest one, but it uh, talks about the various area whether the 3D printing used uh, academic also happen a uh, motor vehicle automation nowadays in the military uh, share has been increased in the submarines and airplanes and the aviation industry this area where the usability is increasing there are so many hobbyist hobbyist 
you can find in your across your neighborhood and somewhere was using in recent COVID time people start making the this uh, face shield and other like a door opening handle using this technology and this will become very popular. Uh, many of the uh, institute also uh, providing such type of the things to the society. So just say, and if you see the complexity of the type of the parts can be built using this, uh, you can see this image uh, where the very complex part uh, can be built using 3D printing technology and the weight can be reduced of the part. And there's a very good case studies in the Boeing where the seed, the seeds weight pass and they've been redesigned because some of the complex structure cannot be manufacturing using the traditional way of manufacturing. So 3D printing has been used there. Um, they extend the limit uh, of the manufacturing and we can manufacture the complex design which is not generally normally possible using the traditional way of the manufacturing. So there the uh, this Boeing is capable to safeguard in their weight by I think the 14% of their seats uh, seat weight like if the seat is of the 100 kg for example so they are capable to get it to the 86 kg so less of the weight you have to carry into the air so more will be the efficiency that's the sole purpose and the Navy also just talking about uh, the companies who build the submarines and all so what they're doing they are asking or they are deploying the 3D printer in the submarine or the airship carrier only. So when the inventory is been needed, yeah, these officers can build the part then and there only and at the point of conception only. Uh, it's a very customized solution can be developed using the 3D printing technology. And this is an example of a uh, person where the, he's an athlete to the paramilitary World Cup. So the limbs, uh, the, the specific, not the limbs, specifically here, the type of the uh, what you say the athletic French manufacturer customized for sports by using uh, the paddle of his like in a bicycle has been built uh, customizedly designed and the built using the 3D printing technology. It's also have an uh, in the area of the what do you say the beauty and the fashion also. Uh, this company has built the mask with customized face pack can be you can make the customized mask and the different type of the material can be put here. So this is the Johnson and Johnson. So it has been designed that different type of the material can be put here to give the customized uh, solution for the nourishment of your skin. And it's also have an application into the building of the houses. And we have in Dubai, we can see the with the house has been a building has been built using the 3D printing technology. And the walls and other things have been built using the 3D printing technology. And the, we have the countless other areas like in a medical manufacturing food everywhere food has a limitation so one of very known fellow uh, is, uh, in india like in a niftum university uh, where he just working around the food printing and they are working in the domain of developing the material for the food which can be uh, used for the 3d printing and you can have an uh, but most of the bakery type of the solution or uh, the type of the product has been developed where you like to build any shape on your cake or on the pastry. So there is some the more applicability, but uh, they're build, trying to build something else on the top of that. They're providing customized solution for the nourishment of the nutrition into the food and the specific type of powder can be built in the different layers. That's it. education, automotive, dental have the very good thing. Dr. Ravi uh, can talk about it in details. Uh, robotics also, have, <laughs> we made the couple of the robot in house at an IFT and the, all the parts had been made using the uh, using the 3D printing in house only it's in a one hour or two of the labs. We recently like and today only had a class with my students. So they were planning to have an, a SCADA robot using the 3D printing technology. So all the parts we are making, not the motors and servos, these all the links parts and other things. And electronics also on a PCB and in one of our we recently about to procure and one of the printer for the PCB designing and all. They also work on the, this 3D printing concept and uh, when the layer has been made and the, through the electronic material can be filled in. So in that slab is coming up in the NIFT Mumbai smart variable lab. So there we are in a process of buying this printer. So benefit of the 3D printing technology is a lower cost and simplifying supply chain. Supply chain can also be reduced at the point of conception point. Uh, uh, parts can be built. We only should have an, a, a digital form parts available. 
product performance can also be increased faster time to uh, time to market like we need not to go to the traditional way of the developing the parts <coughs> we can build at the point of the conception or the prototyping can be done easily so that's reduce the overall the what you say the uh, engineering part and the manufacturability part of a of a new product faster cycle time that's the same thing tooling life can be increased up to the 10x flexible logistic uh, the somehow it has been added to the supply chain concept wherever we need it we can send the files only and the additive allows the distributed manufacturing and on demand product solution customized solution can be there 3d printing till date is not been used for the mass production is for the some of the recent printer like an hp they are trying to uh, built into the batch production and some batch production manufacturing can be done but it's more about the customized solution and the initial development of the things and uh, very uh, complex structure need to be built and the new innovative visor which generally take the like a long time you need not to be depend on the outside vendors uh, so it just help us to uh, do the various research or uh, developing the new parts so that's a very good area actually <clears throat> now <clears throat> after talking about the, this though i have not talked in very detail in depth so we is required i can talk in detail very much about those things a theoretically point of view at least so uh, three four of type of the practical two and three but here i am just like to talk about the work done in the 3d printing area at nift now uh, when the journey started like in a five six year back so we thought that we should uh, start thinking of the 3d printing parts in nift there we uh, introduced this 3d printing and uh, we introduced this as in a uh two subjects in my pg for the three year backs only and the students are now working in this to me what we thought of that the we should have an a uh, solution for the apparel manufacturing industry low cost solution why it's have an a possibility of solution as i can see on the left hand side the various type of the garments are there now just to build the garments on the right hand side i'm showing the aids which might be needed to build these Uh, garments and uh, they are been used for the sewing operators and they help to fold the fabric they have to navigate the fabric even though you can see all the parts on the right hand side of the metal parts but once we uh, were aware about the 3d printing technology specifically for the fdm we just one day we were just thinking of and we'll able to identify these parts are actually a wood design now they have to just like in jigs and fixture they have to guide the fabric in apparel manufacturing industry and they are called as an a folder an attachment uh, they doesn't go under the very high stress and the polymers can also withstand with the those stresses and uh, uh, instead of the longer life the customized solution are been treated like i'm wearing i'm not really like i'm having a this jacket here and i have to need to fold the fabric at the different location and the collar attachment side seam and um, at the bottom we call it as the hemming like i need to fold the fabric and the various location so the distance like in a either i can have a 1 inch fold either i have a 2 inch fold either i can have a 4 inch fold so the different type of the folding has been required now the what the small scale industry doesn't afford all type of the folders to carry the inventory because the, uh, most of the time they don't require all the folder at one point of the time and whenever they require is like in once in a blue moon like you know if i required one folder today it might require the same folder like in after one year after ha 6 month at least 6 month that because uh, and whenever they don't have enough such type of the folders they ask the designer to make a change into the garment so that they are again compromising on the design or if they do it manually the productivity reduce because this type of the folders helps them uh, to increase is the productivity and normally we'll say that de-skilling of the operator I mean, high skill operator doesn't required when they use these aids so that's why saying uh, apparel manufacturing is the high variability in design style and fabric customized spare parts and attachments are needed actually because of the design different type of the design and diversification into the product stocking and retrieving of the part and attachment is a challenge and the most of the these small parts are not been built in, in india actually they need to be uh, import from the china japan or some of the europe and where specifically in the technical textile with a very specific aids uh, are been required we are just we are about to work about the indian ordinance factory for the parachute building so we are developing couple of the parts for them and that's we are working there because uh, whatever the spare parts they needed they're, they're getting it from overseas 
so uh, to have an uh, them at the place is a high lead time extra cost uh, if in the absence of these part the close alternative has been identified which are available into the uh, their inventory and nearby so they compromise with the quality and uh, what we say as mentioned the overdues like if you i uh, would like to elaborate this only like this is a t-shirt if you say the one two three four five six and eight are the different areas where the folding has been done and that these type of the folders are required to fold the uh, fabric over here and if you see the right hand side table different type of the hem side this is which is the hemming process different type of the hems are required so you never know like you know, how the designer works he says this is the two inch this is the uh, again the two inch this is the 1.5 inch and this is some different like so you should have an inventory for all these parts with you and this is a one example like so one day we were counting so different type of the i think more than 300 uh, parts are there and this is a ham is the one of the part like and it's also having a different type of the sizes available so that can't be afforded by a small scale industry and collecting those parts is very difficult uh, if you see the uh, big or uh, the big or the small whatever say the company the 1500 operators are working getting the parts for them uh, getting the parts for all the uh, new design and when they don't have you just look for the your inventory then you look for the local market then you look for the uh, import options and doing the sampling also which is the first way to get the approval of the government from the buyer only then he go the gives the go ahead then then you do then only you do the main uh, production so during the sampling if you don't uh, you have to make the one or two pieces only and if the design is very unique you don't have any inventory with you so either you compromise on the design either you lose your business either you come uh, ask them to uh, you'll ask them to give them more time so they can buy those parts so that's the challenge so we just thought that we should identify some solution so here i'm just talking about the five six inventory studies here and there are some may be somehow be related with the quality of the DTU manufacturing like uh, one of the uh, characteristics of the 3D printing where uh, 3D printing having is uh, what's the application is the high variability and low consumption. So my first case study talks about that. Some of the parts we need to be make the indigenous solution. My first and second case study talks about that. Customization is needed. Case study three will talk about that. High lead times are there, like you know, parts that need to be imported from outside. Why can't we have an uh, indigenous solution? My case study four talks about the uh, development of the new like automation seam ripping system uh, this is a case study since six sorry uh, not the five one here because i'll just introduce one more case study so making the some automation in house only developing of some parts so those uh, system required the some uh, subsystem assemblies so making them through the traditional approach will takes more time so that's not been possible in the student projects and prototyping so they are 3D printing also find its case. So just start talking about uh, case study one here. Now this is one of the part which is the downstream hammer for using the 3D printing technique we develop it. Initial part is like a metal part. This is a one inch hemming folder. So it is used to fold the fabric by one inch. And uh, it's made of the SS stainless steel. And this is the attachment folder and the fabric comes from this here, this side and it get fold and it goes this side outside here the sewing machine will be there so which can stitch the fabric so it only guide the fabric it fold the fabric so we'll identify this was the first part like and we thought that why a metal part has been required this can be done of any polymer so that's why and uh, we use the basic uh, way of development uh, of a 3d printing part using the like metal part is then then we do did the reverse injuring uh, scan the part then the feature extraction will identify what are the various geometry what the curves and other things will did the modeling analysis then the some of the places will did the topology uh, optimization and then the, we have an, a part like this available with us and further we'll make the certain change this curve uh, what's, what's what you say the uh, this type of the surface will able texture will able to develop just to guide the fabric also during the uh, stitching also so that's the basic uh, path we adopted for development of this part and uh, single downstream hammer this is the another way of the same part like an you know, so here this is club with the pressure foot only 
and you can see the this is the extruded version here and here the fabric will be folded here and the needle will come here so that's we develop here and abs material has been done so we uh, what the challenge we will face here i think professor ravi was talk supposed to talk about the design for am design for additive manufacturing technology the technology also have certain limitations in terms of the metal uh, in terms of the material what we are using so instead of the metal part, if I'm going to use a polymer, what ch biggest challenge is, is getting metal parts having a thickness of 0.8 mm or less than a 1 mm. So if we we cannot make the these parts in that uh, low thickness because those are sheet metal parts. So objective was just to have the same functionality output and the we can make the change into the design of existing parts so it can be designed for 3d printing that's a design for additive manufacturing with a standard terminology we use there so we have to think twice we have to make the changes into the design of the part so it can be print very easily using the 3d printing fdm part strength is enough so it can withstand uh, the type of the forces but what are the functionality or desire output required from the part that should be achievable. So we use the ABS material here and the use the field density 40% uh, for this part and made the certain design change and this part is work very fine here uh, and uh, I'm, how the part was made. I'm just talking about uh, here. I'm just trying to introduce using the four videos. Uh, <coughs> what are the various steps of making a part? Like once we have an CAD model with us, we need to do the slicing and the machine code generation. Hey, I'm showing an IGER interface here, which is um, uh, for the what's the Mark Force 2 printer, which we have in the house, and the Onyxy material has been used to build the part. So it's the first time doing the slicing. Once you have a CAD model, so you have to define the orientation of the part, and then you need to define the layer height. So once you define the layer height, then what has been needed? So it slices the parts based on that. Like this is an a part CAD model of the part. I define the orientation the weight is going to build because that somehow will decide the uh, sport material. So I built in this direction because this is the functional area. I don't want any uh, what you say the any uh, um, support material in this because if, even though I remove the sport material, surface finish is not as per requirement. So if I built it like this, I'll not have an a uh, support material here. So the finish will be the high in the desired area. So that's somehow we'll decide the orientation while we'll build the part. So here it is one. This has been built. I um, do the slicing. Certain parameters has been defined. What what will be the layer height? What will be the orientation already been defined? Infill, how much infill, whether we use the another material there or not. And then it's finally it's do the tool pathing also. What will the tool path? So this uh, software is doing itself and there are a lot of algorithms are developed and there are the open source platform is also available. So now once that has been done, so it will show the layer by layer how the part has been built. So this is the part in this orientation. will define the location of the part on the build plate also. So file can be exported here or saved here or it can be given directly to the printer itself. And once we are done with the slicing, the file can be saved into the uh, what's the USB flash drive. Then we have an uh, once you have an a uh, part with the uh, as what you say the G code or M code or some code which has been close to the requirement of the machine. So they're in fact to the now part has been built in here. I'm just showing the in between images, the 15 second. Uh, video here. So how the printing is happening, the material we are using is the Onyx C, which is the nylon with the chopped carbon fiber. So this is the better strength than the ABS as well as the mm, PLA. The part is building here. You can see the here, which was the slot here for the fixing and the, the support material is coming. 
and this is the part uh, area where the support material will actually not be needed because that's a functional area. So I, when the 3D printing is done, we'll just get the part from the <coughs> built plate. So very easy and then removing the support material from the part. And then we have a removal the support material. Removing the support. Very easily support material comes out in this printer. And then we'll develop the part and we try to use into industry. Here we can show you. Now, this part gives us the flexibility uh, to make the more parts, uh, and we use the, for later the prismatic approach to manufacture the part. Now, it's showing it's working very fine, very easily, just like in a, as a normal metal parts. And the prismatic approach is that the uh, whatever the instead of the one inch, if we did that 1.5 inch, I have an some Excel sheet with me. I make the changes into the sheets uh, dimension from the CAD model will update itself. So we just make the some variables into the dimension and using the Excel sheet in a sequential manner that's already been defined into the Excel sheet. We make one inch to 1.5 inch, two inch that much changes can be done very easily and we can get in a CAD drawing uh, like a, uh, less than a four or five minutes because we need to provide the information for the various variables and it may rebuild the CAD model again. And we can save the part, export into the STL format. Very easy one. Like you know, those are the advancement has been done into the CAM. <coughs> Case study three is related to the CAM here. So this is CAM has been basically used into the embroidery machine. And uh, in this, what happened? Uh, these are the follower path here with the follower moves. <coughs> this is they have been using the Teflon material. And uh, what we did, we did the same thing. We did the reverse engineering concept, and uh, they are getting it very costly again, 6,000, 7,000. So this is somehow the indigenous solution comes under that category. <coughs> Sorry. So we made it in, uh, do the reverse changing, we made this thing and uh, we print it very easily. First quit goes and the, these are the, like and these are, you can sports, you can say it. So it's used on the machine only. So we got, it's like in 37%, uh, no, not the third, it's a 50% infill, I think somehow. So the strength was not OK. The later when we'll make it like an 100 percent. So we'll get the good strength here and it's working very fine. So they are the eight, nine, ten type of the designs are there. Company requirement was a 15 to 20 piece per year for the one type of the, this and they are the eight different type of the this cam with them. So we made them. So one part is not going uh, much costly to them. Like in a, this hardly cost them uh 1000 rupees so we did the 3d scanning of the data cad model this is a normal reverse engineering process we also generate the deviation uh sheet also and there this is the actual you can say these spots are there the first trial these are first trial images then we made the whole uh part as in 100 percent solid and it takes only the four four five then it takes like in a six hours to build one part and cost less than a uh thousand rupees here now this is the case study four which I would like to talk about specifically. Uh, this case study is uh, one of the indigenous solution and the proper doing of the um, proper development of the innovative ideas which can be there. This is for the Raymond's India. So they have another uh, this fabric cutting machine. Our automatic fabric cutting machine and this is the pressure foot bowl you can see when the fabric is in the layers and the blade is been required to cut the fabric in layer by a number of the layers. So this is the base plate uh, which which 
press the all the layers and blades move inside it and the blades move from this load and assembly comes and blade move this load blade is of the high strength steel and this part is of the aluminium and they are the difference in their <coughs> hardness because of that uh, what happened uh, the wear tear happen at this point and this is a one single part and it's the important part with the grabber grabber is an i think a japanese machine and they need to bought it from uh, outside india japanese or germany and forget i'm to be very honest it's a japanese anyhow so the wear tear happen here now if they increase the hardness here what will happen even though they don't have a facility for that but if they somehow do it what will be the uh, issue the wear tear hap start happening into the blade itself so uh, one day i was just visiting the uh, one of the factory in bangalore and this is silver spark factory of the raymonds so i just was came across this problem so we thought why don't you use the 3d printing to make this so using this 3d printing will did the same the scanning and other process which is the part of this now instead of this whole part what we thought the wear tear happen why don't we have an uh, insert like a bush type of the part here and the other part will remain same and that part will be the metallic part and the uh, rest of the part can be any other material uh, like uh, when we have that time we bought this uh, mark force 2 so using the mark force 2 we print all the parts we make the design change we make a bush or insert here which can be fixed here and now instead of the one part it's a two part assembly and uh, that can be seen here so this is the new design of the part and this is the part assembly here so we uh, this is the insert we move it we you go we went with the number of the option of this material hot die steel stainless steel and gun metal we used it and cost was around 3000 this part and this part and this part the only this part cost is 500 rupees only so next time uh, we sent the part to the uh, company itself we inserted the insert here also in which the threads are uh, there that is the flexibility available with the 3d printing technology here and uh, two of the whole of this are being used to mount this on the base here and rest two are for the assembly here and it's working very fine you can say this is gun metal parts will be used and sent to the industry only and they're using it and very amazing results uh so initial they have to spend 35000 and their life was this up to 6 month and the later they used developed the indigenous solution with the local vendor there they cost them like in a 9 to 10000 per base plate and that was life was i think 2 and 1/2 month so life was reduced and uh, by using this this cost them only the 500 rupees and life is almost like in 3 and 1/2 month and this is a good achievement by the shy and they have an eight machine each machine required like in a uh, two two parts two to three parts every year so that they were able to save like almost 80 85% cost of their total cost so it's a very good indigenous solution so these are the capabilities through which sarvana sir your mic is off please turn on thank you sir it was a wonderful session we got so many points for the 3d printing uh, especially by the case studies so by so many case studies we got so many information sir it's, it was a very informative session thank you very much thank you we can we can be miles away but ideas travel miles when they have clarity especially explaining concept of digital manufacturing at granular level and then guiding the participants of in terms of knowledge enhancement now the coaching sessions i switch over to uh, dr rajkumar for the question and answer session uh, sir we are having few questions with us yeah. so we will pick up few of them sure sure uh, first question is from some anonymous right now we don't know who is the person but the question is how do you see additive manufacturing in near future in the field of fashion uh there are the various way to uh, by which we can see the uh, 3d printing or am having its uh, application in the fashion industry or uh, on the area we are trying to cater presently is not the making the garments 
and the people have shown their like in capabilities of building the garments but still the material type of the material people are using is not very uh, good permeability or porosity and not the breathability take, uh, available with them for the aesthetic purpose some braziers or bra has been developed some of the designers are using the some accessories and other those are in the fashion actually but the area presently we are catering is related to the at the apparel manufacturing industry so it's not limited to the apparel also what we are developing trying to develop that similar thing can be uh, transformed to the other sectors also and um, it's a very obvious people are working in that domain and the, with the flexible materials people are finding application uh, or in the uh, people are finding the application into the fashion industry and the apparel manufacturing industry so these two sectors are there one is the manufacturing one is the garment itself accessories are there raymond recently like in a, with a type notch or the type in they have been making customized for you using the 3d printing technology and we just uh, thought the, about the idea and we spread them with them so they're coming up this so whenever the customization are needed with the accessories area so there it have a good application with the in, uh, invention or with the development of the new materials it can be app application into the uh, garment itself only but presently we are because of those limitation we are only for the machine rear production side we are working presently thank you sir great reply uh, another question is uh, what are the current challenges in additive manufacturing would we able to rectify them in future yeah, this is <laughs> every technology have an uh, advantage and disadvantage. Uh, material is one of the uh, if I say it's depend upon like an uh, advantage. If you general say mass manufacturing is not possible, uh, and if you say the like, but customization is there, uh, all materials cannot be 3D printed. So uh, what I say, uh, this is one of the technology using which we are capable to build the or produce the or manufacture the parts based on our requirement. But many of the times along with the subtractive technology, we use the uh, what you printing like one of the case study I mentioned here where the Raymond's base plate we built. So there we both the technology has been used 3D printing as well as the insert was or Bush was used using the subtractive technology. So a combination of these two will work capable to give the solution to the industry. So don't specific to the uh, technology. One should aware about the advantage, disadvantage, limitation of one technology. That's also there the different type of the 3D printing technology also available. There the material is an issue, uh, whether it's in powder form, but complexity can be handled easily. Batch production with the new printers can be done. So in an, I'm not able to nutshell the things in one or two problems. Or yeah, so the challenges are there. We I cannot share the limitation or the shorthand with the technology. Challenges are there. So by available uh, existing technology on the other platform, we just combine and integrate them. Ultimate objective is just to provide an economical or cheap solution to any of the problem. That's my understanding about the any type of the problem. And the future is long. Like you know, people are developing the new new things, and uh, earlier people don't thought about the having a filament type of the 3D printer for the metals. Now there's Mark IVs and other companies are coming with the desktop type filament type of the 3D metal printers. So they are leading the edge also. Like that's there. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It was a nice uh, nice reply from you and the session as well. And we are very thankful to you from the uh, NIT uh, family and from the Department of Mechanical Engineering from NIT. And for the further proceeding, I will uh, request uh, Professor Sarvana Kumar to proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Deepak. We are so we are so grateful for your expensive time. The next is.